If you're new to WordPress, the dashboard can be so confusing to navigate. There's a lot of settings and options to choose from. Hey, I'm Sarah, and today I'm going to be showing you the basics of the WordPress dashboard. I'm not going to be showing you every single setting because they've either come from plugins that I've downloaded or they're not really necessary to set up your WordPress site. So I'm just going to be showing you the basics and the most important things that you need to know when setting up your WordPress dashboard. Let's get started. The first thing I want to go over is how to access your WordPress dashboard because if you've never done this before, you might not know how. So all you need to do is type in your blog name and then slash wp-admin. So I already have mine bookmarked and I recommend that you bookmark this page here because that way you won't have to type in the address or remember it. It'll just be in your bookmarks and you can access it a lot easier. So all you need to do is log in and this is going to be the first screen of the WordPress dashboard. There is a lot of stuff here, but we are going to be going over it, all of it in detail. And like I said, a few of these things on this dashboard you may not see because they come from plugins that I have installed, so I won't be going over those things. So the first thing you are going to see when you go to the WordPress dashboard is you're going to see this box that says at a glance. It's going to tell you pretty much everything you need to know about your blog at a glance. How many posts you have, the comments, the pages that you have, I have a plugin blocker, so it tells me the amount of spam comments that I have blocked, and then it also tells me what WordPress I am running along with my theme, and I am using a Genesis theme, so it tells me that as well. You're also going to see this, which is the activity. So it tells me my recent comments, it tells me mine and other people's, and then it also tells me the blog posts that I have recently published. If you are brand new to WordPress, yours might look a little bit different because you might not have any blog posts posted or comments to reply to, but this is what it will look like once you actually get started. This is a plugin that I have, so I won't be going over that. This is also another plugin that I have. This is for Google Analytics dashboard, and I believe the rest of the stuff I have down here is all for plugins. You may have this one, which is the quick draft. So basically, if you have a blog post idea and you want to just write a quick draft of it, you can do that here and then save it as a draft. I typically don't like to use this because it goes to the older version of the WordPress blog post writer, whereas I use Gutenberg, which is a block editor instead. I prefer to use that one. So I don't actually use this quick draft, which is why it is all the way down here. So the only other thing that you need to know on this dashboard is when you have a plugin that has one of these little boxes, it will show up here. And then you can also organize this dashboard the way that you want. So as you can see down here, I have these boxes closed because I don't need them. So you can click on this little thing here and all of the boxes that you don't want will just go into a little text box as opposed to having the whole thing open. You can also change the order that these things are in as well. So you can either click and drag, and then you see you can move it to wherever you want, or you can use these little arrows and it will move them one down for you. The next thing we are gonna go over is over here on the sidebar. This is primarily where I'm going to be getting to all of the options from. This is just something simple, the update screen. This will just tell you what your current version of WordPress is, if you need to install any updates for WordPress, or if you need to have update any of your plugins or themes. So this is basically just a quick overview of all of your updates. The next thing we are going to get into is the posts. So there are a few tabs here. The first one we're going to go to is all posts. This will basically just take you to all of your blog posts. You can see all of the posts that you've published, you can see your drafts, you can see your pillar content, which is something we're not going to get into, and you can also see all of your deleted drafts. I don't have any deleted drafts, so that option is not going to show up for me because all of my drafts I have permanently deleted. You can search for posts over here if you're looking for something quickly, and there are also a few post options here as well. So you can see right here, if you click on quick edit, you can change the title, the slug, the date that it was posted, you can add a password, categories. There are just a few small things that you can change here. And this pretty much tells you everything that you need to know about your blog from here. If you click on edit, it will take you to the actual blog post. You can see the author, you can see your categories and your tags. And this over here is a plugin that I have, so I won't be going over that. If you want to add a new post, you can either add a post from here in the add new, or you can go over here to the add new tab here if you want to get to it directly from your dashboard and you don't want to click on your post to get to this button. You can also up here get to it as well if you wanted to add something up here just as an extra option. So the next thing we're going to go over is the categories. Categories or tags are both things that help you organize your posts. 
categories are the things that you can add to your blog post. Uh, when you go to your homepage and you go to edit your blog, you can add drop down menus with different categories or tags in them so that people can get to your blog posts easier. And the tags are also the same way. You can categorize them by tags. And then when you go to create a new blog post, you can add these into the settings that are there. The next tab we are going to go to is the media. I don't generally use this tab. I tend to add all of my media into my blog posts. But if you want to use this tab, you can see all of the photos that you have here and you can also add new photos from here. Next tab is pages. So we have all pages and add new. Obviously the add new button is going to take you to your customizer so that you can add a new page. All pages kind of like the tags and the blog post is going to show you all of the pages that you have on your blog. You can add a new one up here, you can look at your published ones, and I believe a deleted one will show up as well if you have deleted any pages. This one is pretty simple, it is exactly like the other two pages. Next one we're going to go to is comments. This one is again pretty self-explanatory. This is where all of your comments are going to go from your blog. I'm currently in all right now, so it is not only showing other people's comments, but it is showing mine as well. If you just like to see yours, you can go here. So if on your blog you choose to wait for comments to be approved before they get posted, they will go to the pending tab instead. You can also see all of your approved comments. You can delete or check your spam comments from here, and then any comments that you've trashed will go up here. If you don't have a spam comment plugin downloaded, you may not have a spam tab. So I do recommend if you don't see this to find a spam plugin so that you don't have to go through all of your comments and try and decide which one is spam. If you want to see the most important plugins that I have downloaded and you want to get some of these options for yourself, I highly recommend checking out the video that I did on the best WordPress plugins that I have downloaded on my blog. I will link it right here or down below in the description if you want to check that out. So all of these came from plugins, that is why I'm skipping them. And the next important tab is the appearance. There is a lot of options here, so we're going to go over the most important ones. The first one is the themes. This one is another easy tab. It basically just shows you all of the themes that you have downloaded. This customize option is going to take you to the blog customizer and there is a ton of options here. So if you'd like me to go through all the options that you have here for setting up your blog, let me know down below in the comment section because there is way too many things to go through. This is for a whole new video. So if you'd like me to go through this stuff because I can, let me know down below and I will show you how to set up this stuff as well. So we're not going to be working on that tab, but that is there if you want to customize anything for your blog. The next option is widgets and widget context. So these are basically just little add-ons that you can add to your blog and those can be customized here. This is another big topic, so if you don't know what this is, I may go over it in another video. Menus is the next important tab and this basically just allows you to organize the menus on the front end of your site. I generally tend to organize mine from the WordPress customize option, but you can also do it here if you'd like. These things really aren't important, so I'm going to be skipping those and move over to the plugins. So we have install plugins, add new, and plugin editor. Obviously these two are relatively self-explanatory. I never really use the plugin editor and add new is just going to take you directly to adding a new plugin. So we're going to move to just the plugins. So this is all of the plugins that you have downloaded on your site. This is going to be where you can manage them all, you can delete them, you can deactivate them, you can update them. This is where everything goes for your plugins. You can also see on some of them the settings. Sometimes it's easier to go here to the settings than trying to find the settings in here. So if you ever can't find a plugin in here but you want to access it, you can always go to the installed plugins and see if there is a setting option there. There's a few other tabs up here. You can see all your plugins, the active ones, ones that you have auto updates enabled on, disabled, and there's also usually a deactivated plugin option here, but all of mine are active, so that's obviously not showing up for me. And then you can either add plugins from down here, as we saw, or you can add a plugin from up here. And you can search installed plugins as well if you are looking for a specific plugin. So this is how you can install plugins. These are just some featured ones that generally a lot of people have on their site. You can search for plugins here, you can go to a couple options here, or you can upload a plugin. So some plugins you can search for online and then download a zipped folder, and then you can upload that zipped folder here is if you find it online as opposed to in here, that is a way to upload plugins. We're going to move down to settings here, 
and going to general. This is going to give you the general information about your site. So your site title, your tagline, your WordPress URL, the email that you would like to use, and a few other things like your time zones and how you would like your time formatted, and even what day you would like the week to start on. There are a few other settings that you can change in here, like if you want to change how your homepage displays and different things like this, but I believe a lot of these settings I usually change in the customize option of your blog. So I'm pretty sure you don't necessarily need to look at this. Most of the stuff is in the customize option, but it is here just in case you need to know about it. The discussions tab is going to show you options for your comment section. So you can set up comment moderation settings and spam settings from here. Now media is going to give you your photo sizes. So you might want to take note of whatever these sizes are because it will tell you how big to create your photos so that you make sure that they aren't too big or too small for your specific WordPress theme. And everything else down here is going to be from a plugin that I have installed or it is not going to be very useful and I've never touched it to handle my blog. And that is going to be it for the WordPress dashboard. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and leave a comment down below if you'd like to see me do any other WordPress oriented videos like this. For example, the blog theme customizer. Check out one of these two videos if you'd like to see more from me. And I'll see you next time. Bye.